yeah. awareness can be uh, maintained, um, I guess, best by having a, a definite plan and that awareness all the way through. I, I start with a sort of a general overview of a, a flight. So, okay, big picture stuff. You know, I'm in a hotel in, in Langley Park and there's an aeroplane on the grass and I have to fly it around the track and, and then land it on, back on Langley Park. So that would be my start. And then, and then I would go through that same plan, getting deeper and deeper in, into the, the levels, if you like. Um, and then looking at finer and finer points and, and basically think through the flight. Think, all right, I'm going to, for example, I'm going to taxi out. Is the taxiing out going to be easy? Actually here, there are some yellow marker boards on the grass there, so you got to watch out for those. Whilst I'm avoiding those, I mustn't taxi onto the runway. And if you, well, if I think through the flight like that in, in, in as much detail as that, then, then I'm not, not, I can't guarantee, but I'm pretty sure that I'll think of most eventualities. No one can know better than you whether you're fit for flight or not. So it's really up to you to know, to, know, to ask, to make sure you are physically fit to be in, that, in the seat you're occupying in the cockpit. Some recommendations for young players in the situational awareness area is follow your procedures, follow your systems, follow your SOPs. And if we look at, for example, the approach phase of flight where there's a lot happening, uh, not only have you have got to descend, you've got to look at an approach, you've got to talk on the radio, you've got a whole number of things to do. Generally it starts with good preparation, so not just getting to your top of descent point and going, I've got to start thinking about my descent, being organised and doing it you know, a good 10 minutes before you're ready to, to start your descent and having a plan. And if you have a plan and you follow your SOPs and you follow pr your procedures which have been designed to minimise risk then you're a long way to achieving good situational awareness. I personally think a flight starts weeks ahead. You know, um, if, if you said to me, go flying right now, I would, I would say, okay, I can go flying right now, but actually you need time to think about it. So I think there's, you, you cannot plan a flight enough. There's no such thing as over planning a flight. People always talk about third parties getting in your way like the weather for example or you know there was an, a defect on the aeroplane personally I I think my number one rule is um, I I can upset my day you know I am perfectly capable of making a mistake as in the 27 years that I've been flying I've proven on <laughs> numerous occasions and even now after 27 years whether it's in one of these or in a 747 I make a mistake and uh, I think the key is don't don't chew your arm off about it, but say to yourself, okay, if I make a mistake, I have to, you know, cure that problem immediately, but make sure that doesn't affect the rest of my performance. Because as sure as eggs are eggs, you are gonna make mistakes. Just make sure they're they're small ones and that you can cope after the, after you've made one. It's important that flight crew members focus on their primary task, which is flying the aeroplane, maintaining situational awareness, uh, and putting barriers and defences to prevent those distractions actually occurring. A clear example would be uh, leaving the headset on during all phases of the flight so that the, the passengers uh, distraction can be minimised. When you've got a situation where you've got a call on a, a checklist or you're distracted by another item or a third party in the aircraft, always remember keep coming back to your cockpit scan um, regularly, especially in IMC night. Um, you've got to keep referring back to that all the time and not get distracted long enough that you can lose directional control of the aircraft, which is quite, quite an easy thing. The first thing that I think is an essential in what we do, which, which of course is, is just one sphere of aviation. I mean, you could take this to being a fighter pilot, an airline pilot, a flying instructor, crop spraying, whatever aspect of aviation, is that you have to be uh, so comfortable in the environment that you're going to fly that you can maintain your situational awareness. So you have to be completely comfortable that you would never have to think about control movements and all that stuff in this kind of level of what we're doing. Just basically being able to see the big picture the whole time. Um, there are a number of policies that company introduced to try and deal with situational awareness. Uh, the sterile cockpit is one of those where we try to ensure that on um, takeoff and coming into land, usually below 10,000 feet, that nothing else is taking place in the cockpit except the operational requirements that happen to exist. Uh, assessing traffic in an uncontrolled airspace is, is a very difficult one for young pilots. So 
our strategies for assisting them with that is we, we do a lot of mock traffic. And in their instant rating training, we set up a lot of mock traffic examples, if there isn't any traffic there. Um, what would you do here? You know, who's there first, who's there last? What would you do? And we set up some very simple principles, and that is the old, uh, you know, we set up a thousand feet separation. If we can't do that, we set up 10 miles. If we can't do that, we set up 10 minutes. So it, it gives them a multi-level way that they can assess the traffic and at least apply some separation. That then helps them build on that experience, the young pilots. And after a while, I find probably after 12 months, they can handle any traffic situation very well. In fact, they, they almost I encourage them to take leadership with the traffic. And if they get traffic, take the leadership and, and organise the separation to your satisfaction because you won't necessarily find that that same level of leadership or that same skill is necessarily out there in the industry with other pilots.